Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, back with another Acorn computer. So this is the Acorn Electron. It was a cut-down version of the uh, BBC, you know, sort of cost reduced really, aimed at the home market. Obviously, it was going to be a lot more affordable. It's really small. It's tiny compared to a BBC Micro. This one is a little bit beaten up. The top is kind of like hanging off. I'll show you. Can you see that? So the screw mounts uh, have sheared off on the underneath here. You can sort of see that. There's nothing supporting it, despite the fact the screws are there. And there's some chips around the back as well as uh, around the front there. So it's a bit beaten up this, and you can see it's pretty dusty. It's uh, been sat around waiting for me to look at it. This I've just had so many other things on. So we've got a 6502 A in here that runs at two megahertz. Um, when it's addressing the ROM, when it goes to access RAM, it goes down to one megahertz. So looking around the back, we can see we've got an expansion edge connector there. You can get, a, I think it's called a plus or something that connects on the back, and that allows you to stick uh, cartridges and all that sort of stuff in there. And on this side again where the crack is, we've got two connections here. I'm guessing one of these is going to be for tape. The other one may be some sort of AV connector, I'm not sure at this stage. And then we've got, strangely, two connectors here. Uh, one of them is going to be RF, I think. I don't think this output's composite as default. That's one of the mods I think you need to do to this. So I might, might do that later within this video. Is that a power LED or is that the caps lock? LED. I'm suspecting probably the caps lock LED actually. And we've got a DC barrel jack connector there. Um, now the regulation on these, I have come across these before, worked on one of these uh, or two of these back in the day and uh, it was generally problems with the regulator, the regulators would fail. So the, you know the, the regulation is done on board, you need to feed 18 volts in. Uh, so in advance I bought a uh, just cheap one amp 18 volt power supply but considering that the top's half hanging off anyway let's just go straight into it before we even attempt to power this up so as i get this second screw out on the back here i'm sort of expecting it's going to come to pieces with this one removed because the two at the front do not look like they're holding in place it looks like the the top sheared off yeah look so i'm going to take two screws out obviously ribbon oh, nearly ripped that there look let's just to flip this around Oh, the speakers fell out as well. I'm not even sure where that was, actually. <laughs> you can see the glue or mastic or whatever it is there. It's not even connected, look, that's weird. So someone's definitely been inside this. Uh, and you can see the ribbon here, ugh. Oh, it looks all right, it's a bit mangly, but... Just looking down there, those connections look awful. Is this uh, an aftermarket thing that's been fed to this? I'm not sure. Let's just see how does this come up. Slides up, look. There we go. So it's a bit like the BBC, the way that connects, actually. Uh, but it just, I don't know, it looks really dirty there. Can you see that? It's like fuzzy. It could just be a bit of fluff or something, I don't know. Well, anyway, we'll try it without the keyboard to start with. I want to just uh, see what's uh, going on with it. So, yeah, not very many chips at all. Look, we've got ROM here. Then we've got the 6502 there. And then we've got a chip here which is the main backbone of the system. You know, it's like a, a ULA gates array. It's got most of the logic there. There's very little going on. Where's the RAM? There is 32K RAM on here. It must be here, actually. One, two, three, four. Four, one, six, fours by the look of it, actually. Which is interesting because they're a bit each, aren't they? Four, one, six, fours. So if we've got four, We've got four bits. How have we got four bits of RAM? <laughs> Where are the other four? Mm. I think what they're doing, they're doing some cl some uh, clever multiplexing or something there because you need eight bits. Well, we only got four chips. The 64K, yeah. We've got 32K RAM, so yeah, they're doubling up. It's almost like it must be done in two halves. It must be latched or something, I don't know. Um, so that's interesting. I don't ever remember that from when I looked at these in the past. But the key is uh, this side over here, uh, so this is our little regulation board and uh, if memory serves you get like some weird voltages here like minus something, minus uh, 15 or minus 5, I honestly can't remember, it's ages since I looked at one. Um, it's not marked on here either is it? Yeah your 18 volts goes out here interestingly, 
probably to something on there, maybe for a modem or something, you know, a bit like Commodore did with the 9 volts AC going to the expansion edge connector there. Uh, and it's AC that comes in here actually, and that's the important thing, it gets rectified on here and then step down via this and then it's obviously some switch mode type stuff going on switching because we've got three c cables here look one two three oh there we go plus five minus five yeah i knew there was a negative voltage it's usually that the, the issue on these so plus five ground in the middle and then the blue one is minus five let's just plug it in oh it didn't bang that's a good sign Let's just now connect the speaker. It looks like it slides into a channel here, doesn't it? Uh, and then it obviously connects onto this connector here. Handily, that's actually marked minus and uh, plus there. So you can't get it around the wrong way in relation to its uh, phase. Hang on, let's just put that like that. What I'm hoping is this may give a beep. But then again, maybe not. Yeah, there's no switch on these either, is there? I can't imagine it's looking for anything on the keyboard because, well, it's just the keys, that's it. Um, maybe I should connect this up to the TV. I think we'll do that next. We'll connect the uh, modulator up to the TV here and give it a try that way. And you know what I'm like, I'm always getting ahead of myself. Let's do the obvious stuff. Let's just make sure there is a voltage there, you know. So if we carefully measure between the center pin here, ground, make sure you don't slip on these, and a minus five. So we've got minus 5.07, and then we'll do the bottom one, plus 5, 4.81. So we've got voltages. Aha! We have something. <laughs> there is a fault. I like it when there's a fault. Let's just power it off and on. It's not tuned in very well, but... Yeah, we have a fault. So, could be RAM, could be anything really, but... Yeah, my bet is on RAM. I'm just going to finger touch the tops of the ICs here just to feel, see if I feel anything getting hot. No. Mm, could be a dead uh, ASIC on there. So just trying a few power cycles here. The interesting thing is, the screen's yellow, isn't it, with red? So it's clearly getting a certain way through some processing or something there, I would think. Maybe not. Maybe that's just the default output from the video side of things when it's not been initialized properly or maybe due to a fault but I'm thinking RAM I may just try quickly piggybacking the, each of those four RAM chips because there's only four that easy to do see if we get any difference in behavior there that would be a huge clue that it is the RAM uh, but I do have another electron here which I will show you next ta-da there's a second one yeah, it's really dirty, this one, compared to the other one, but it's not smashed up. There is no, well, there are no smashed parts of plastic around this, and it's got the uh, protective uh, cover on there, look. Uh, this one, however, also smells <laughs> really badly. Oh, yeah, it smells disgusting, so that needs a thorough clean. But, uh, yeah, I'm not even going to measure the voltages on this one, which is a wee bit risky, but let's just transplant the uh, modulator there. Bring the power over and just quickly plug this in. Hey, fantastic. Well, that's a good good start with that one, isn't it? It's just the keyboard. It's a bit flickery, that. I don't know if you can see what I can see, but it's like, it's almost uh, slightly seizure inducing. Actually, it's giving me a bit of a funny head. Uh, hang on, he's not working. Separate keys on these, though, so it should be relatively easy to clean up. Eyes not working. P's not working. Let's just make sure it's not columns and stuff. No, it's not. Yeah, some of the keys are not working here. Others are. Yeah, J. Hang on. Yeah, I, J. Maybe it is a column. No, N's working. No, oh, M's not. Oh, mind you. Yeah, we could have column problems here, actually. Uh, which could indicate that ribbon. So, the other thing we could do before we try piggybacking the RAM is just temporarily just lift this off. I think this clip, does this pull forward? Yeah, look, it pulls forward. This bit lifts up and then off. And we've got a Franci ULA here. So it's a unified logic array, or uncommitted logic array. Just carefully take that out. Yeah, so I think we'll clean up the contacts here. You can see which way around that goes. Uh, where's the pin one marking on that? I don't see a number, but anyway, the Franci is uh, that way around, isn't it? So let's just carefully just put that there. I've got the wrist strap on, by the way. 
So if we just get a cotton bud with a tiny little bit of this deoxic gold onto the end there, and we'll just give this a gentle clean, I think. It's designed for gold-plated contacts, this uh, cleaning fluid. They don't look dirty to be honest, so it's very unlikely to be this. It could be that this chip is faulty though. Uh, and then we'll just sort of gently try and touch these contacts here if we can. Anyway, those look okay if I'm honest. I don't think this is going to be the issue. So let's just uh, reinstall this and we're assuming that this is in the right way. Someone may have removed this and put this in the wrong way previously. There we go, it sort of sits into a normal, like a gap, it naturally feels like it's sinking into that. And if we get this back on, so bottom half there, this is the sort of thing where this uh, clip could break pretty easy with the years of uh, just being sat around, I guess. And this just somehow slides up over there now, have I got this right way up? Yeah, I have, I think. It didn't go that way up, did it? Oh, good God. Yeah, this is harder than I was expecting. That's it. Yeah, it was definitely this way up. It's just that feels like that's not low enough. That's the problem I've got there. What is going on here? Why is this bar not low enough? Yeah, you've got to press down like that, make sure the chip is in flat, and then this will slide over like that. There we go. So, I'll give it another try. I don't expect that's going to make any difference whatsoever. Well, the good news is it's not the ULA, because I've taken the, the, the ULA out of the board we were looking at and put it in the other one. I'll show you in a sec. Power it on. Do you see that yellow background there? Look, that's what we've seen on the other one. Which makes me think the other one is not getting through its boot process there. Maybe... CPU's balked on it or something, but yeah, that seems to be working. Let's just test the keyboard again with it out at an angle here, so the E's not working, is it? It's moving the membrane a little bit. I mean, it's not really a membrane; it's like a copper. Oh, there we go, E. Yeah, it's uh, a break in the copper. That's what's wrong with this one. So yeah, just fixed two things at once there, wrist strap on still. This is where the brake is, I just pressed there, and when I tap E, he's not working. Press it, he is working. So yeah, I need to uh, scratch this off and solder a little bit of wire over there. This is the thing, when people go in and out of these, this can be damaged very easily. But what I just did there was uh, take the ULA, wrist strap on ULA out of here, and put the uh, one that was suspect off the other board. And it does work. That's really, really good news because it means that the ULA, which is unobtainium, you know, you can't get them other than from another electron, that works. So on the other board, I think uh, the CPU, I did piggyback the RAM, didn't make any difference at all. So I think CPU, but we'll have a look around the logic. We'll check the clocks and stuff out first and just make sure everything there is looking okay. Now there could still be an issue with the ULA, I'll tell you why, because you saw those yellow and red blocks. This one behaves differently in here. Uh, if we now get this in, um, you'll see this gives a white screen. Now it could be a difference in revisions of the ULAs. It, it could be that simple. Anyway, that's in there now. So I made this look hard before, it's not actually that hard. You make sure it's totally flat, push it down, but then, you see it clip? makes a clip and then you pull that bar over as you're pressing down so it's pretty easy getting those in and out yeah white screen let me show you so this could be either a clue there's a difference between them in the terms of oh hang on it's there we've got blocks again but a minute ago we just oh, there go white screen so there is a difference they behave differently these ULAs but I'm just putting that down to a revision difference actually that's very similar although we had more yellow and we had some red didn't we this one doesn't do that so yeah, coming back to what I was saying, piggyback approach here, got a 4164 uh, DRAM here, just uh, you know, get it nice and snugly over the pins there, totally aligned. And then give it a try, if you see any difference in the patterns or the colours and things, you know you've hit it, but that makes no difference whatsoever, actually. Yeah, and I've just double checked, it is definitely 4164 RAM this. 
we uh, scope the uh, pins here, so we've got uh, phi 2 there, then miss one, then the main clock. So phi 2 there, that's a nice clock. Miss one, and that, that's the clock in. So that's okay. Uh, 34 is the read right, so we've got 49, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34. The read right pin is predominantly stuck high. But if we look at some of the data bits, um, in fact they're stuck high now as well. But if we cycle the power, so I've cycled the power, just occasionally you will get activity on one or two of the data bits and everything looks normal. Inverter here, it's a 74S04. So you've got, you know, input, output, input, output, input, output. If you look at pin six, this is the output, the final stage on this, and I'll show you how it marries up with the schematics in a minute. And if I connect the power, so you can see that is the input to that gate, pin five, pin six, stuck high. Stuck high, that's the problem. The final stage of there is not oscillating. If we go back to the previous gate, uh, Yeah, the other gates are okay, I think, but that final one is just outputting a high. Now, if I piggyback that chip, so this is an LS04 rather than an S04. These are going to fight it out, and you will see that. You can see it on the scope, and this gives me a high level of confidence this is the problem. Because, because as you will see, if I switch it on again and we probe that same pin, can you see that? We're getting weird stuff now. The input is there, that's the output. It's kind of like sand castling, isn't it? What was happening a minute ago, I had a bias. It was like up here, but you could see the peaks at the top. So it's like it was passing the data through, but being pulled down. So that is the problem. Well, it certainly looks like the problem to me, anyway, at this stage. There could be more than one fault, but uh, yeah, let's just get the screws out and get this board out. The modulator, by the way, whenever you plug something in here, it's, it's loose. Can you see that? The modulator is loose on the board. That is bizarre. Let's just disconnect the speaker again. I hope it is that chip, though, because if it is, it means we've not had to replace anything major in here. You know, it's going to have its original RAM, ROM, ULA, and CPU. Is the board free? Yeah, the board is now free, so we can disconnect to these things here. If I can, we'll really tight those. I'll tell you what, it might be a bit easier when we lift the board out a little here. And the wrist strap is on, by the way. Let's just uh, pull that connector off there. So you've got to remember, red to the bottom. It's marked here anyway, you can't really get that wrong. And then it's just a question of pulling these off here. They're like little spades, aren't they? Spade connectors. Good God, that was tight. Uh, hang on, so that one's return. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here, not that it matters, just AC, I'm going to stick uh, a red blob there and a red blob here. But I think that's irrelevant because I, I believe that's AC, both of those are AC, so it won't matter. God, that's one truly really stuck on there. There we go. So, let's get this over to the mat and uh, socket up that chip. Well, I believe this is faulty. I've got a very high level of confidence that's faulty. So I'm just going to just literally snip. Snip the pins off. I'm going to get into each pin here. And snip like that. Precision cutters, it should be light work. It's one side. It's one of those middle ones there somewhere. There we are. So that's the chip off. I can now use some tweezers or something. I'm using these little pliers here. And we'll just uh, heat and pull out the pins if I can. So I unblocked one or two of the holes from the top side here, so I'll just give it a gentle clean. But as you can see, no damage from cutting those pins off that chip, cutting the chip off. That'll do. 
and I've got the socket so pin one is to the left hand side indicated by that white blob there just make sure those pins are nice and straight and there we go there's our socket so I'll just flip it over always fit a socket it just makes it a little easier you know for future repairs because obviously the more times somebody has to work on a board like this the less chance of it surviving so I'm gonna have to go and find an S04 which uh, could be hard actually an LS04 not so much an LS04 may do the job so I might not need to go find an S04 specifically this is one of those sockets where just summon pins there, they tarnish a bit and you've got to heat them just for a bit longer. That one's doing the same, it's like bubbling up. I should have sanded the pins just gently. So let's get the board back in and then I'll uh, put the chip in there. So I'll connect the power up on the left hand side. It's probably not important to put these on there but we'll do it anyway. So we're strap on again and we've got a 74 LS04 here. So that's in its socket. Let's try this first time. Well, after getting nowhere there, look at the IC. It's a 74LS00 oh, I don't believe it. I honestly do not believe it. So, uh, yeah, I cut off a perfectly working 74LS00. Thank God it wasn't a custom. The crazy thing is, and I'll perhaps mention it in annotation somewhere, the crazy thing is, I don't think I've shown cutting a chip off. I get it mentioned so many times. When you know the chip is faulty, just cut it off, especially if it's, uh, you know, off the shelf like this. It's um, easy to replace. I had loads of these in stock, but yeah, the 04 I've got, no wonder there was nothing coming up on the screen. I've picked the wrong chip, I targeted the wrong chip, scoped it and probed it, thinking it was uh, a 74S04 and it's a 74LS04. Zero, zero, so uh. so this simple little board is giving me a hard time actually it is proving very difficult to work out what the hell is going on I ruled out the ULA by swapping over to the other one I see you know clocks the clocks around here I'll show you the stuff in a minute clocks on the CPU are alright read write pins showing activity and then it does freeze but yeah I think there's a crash occurring somewhere the chip enable on the ROM is tied to ground. The output enable, again, to see activity. I tried piggybacking the RAM here. I've scoped the CAS, the RAS, the data in, the data out on the, the RAM here. Well, the data in, data out are shorter on these. That's the way they're usually done on these 4164 chips. You know, the two pins are joined together, the outputs and inputs of the DRAM. Address lines are all connected up correctly here, all amongst each other. I see activity on them all. So it's like, you know, the activity only lasts a period of time. So it just doesn't make any sense at all. We've got some 7474s here. Those seem all right, as far as I can tell. I spent a while looking at the schematics here. You can see the 7474s here, actually. You've got the S74 there. Uh, there's an LS74 as well, yeah, down here. But you see, primarily this is like to do with the video output stuff, yeah? And everything seems all right. So, I don't think it's a clock gen problem. Based on the behaviour so far, I've got to, and the reset's alright by the way, I've got to suspect the ROM or the RAM. Now, I piggybacked all four RAMs at the same time, exactly the same behaviour. So, I don't know, I'm kind of inclined to think it's not the RAM. But you see, when you do piggyback, you get, the, you get them fighting out with each other. But you'd expect some difference behaviour there just a little bit, might get a little bit further into the boot or something but it's always exactly the same it could still be the processor I wonder if the processor is just not getting very far in the boot that might be the issue so I'm more inclined to think one of these but you know what, it could be the RAM so I'll put a diagram on the screen there so you can see which pin I'm probing here but that's pin 1 so you can see that's low, that's uh, ground pin 2 is ready that's high. Three is a phase shifted clock. You can see that there for just a capture. And then we got IRQ, which is high. It's not low, so it's not stuck in and interrupts. Then we got a not connected pin, NMI. Again, that's high, 
so again not stuck in an unmaskable interrupt the sink pin is low look now if we just uh, switch that back on can you see it goes high low high low high low when it's processing sometimes I'm having to power cycle it stops there now I have to power cycle it to get that to show activity so it's crashing at sometimes isn't it the sink should show activity when it's running so occasionally it's crashing look and then stalling so I mean it, you know, it could be the processor if we look at some of the address lines here this is one of them you can see some activity for a short period of time there obviously that activity stops when the sink pin stops but uh, yeah so there's activity on the address bus it's the same on the data bus this is one of the data bus connections you can see there so it's processing at the moment by the looks of things see an activity on the data bus uh, and then we've got uh, reset which is high at the moment um, if you connect the keyboard up and press break you'll see that go low I've tried that just to rule out there being a reset fault that isn't the issue pin uh, 39 there is phi that's another clock phi 2 out so phase is adjusted uh, you know, phase adjustment of the original clock coming in that's the clock in so again I could do a pause on that capture you can see it doesn't look great there but it's the well, let me just press auto you'll see it look better if I just hit auto so you can see we have a clock again if I just run stop it you can see it looks okay um, obviously you've got this is interesting you've got different speeds here so swapping between ROM and RAM that would seem so I mean where do you go from there it's like everything seems all right but it just doesn't blooming work there's got to be some little, some glitch occurring here a glitch here or a glitch here it's anybody's guess as to which and as I say I've scoped the you know the individual data pins on here the the RAS the CAS everything is normal uh, I think based on the fact I could see some clock stretching stuff and that might mean nothing actually because it may be that this just alternates you know depending on uh, access to the RAM down here I think I'm going to go with the RAM let's remove the RAM there's only four chips here you could argue it's going to be easy to remove that but I'll have to program something up to replace that unless I remove the one from the other board so let's just remove these four RAM chips and uh, socket them up and you know what the other clue here perhaps now we could be proven wrong by the time we've removed this but uh, yeah the other clue is the uh, video output that little you know the yellow and red lines that's kind of normal behavior but it's sporadic on here isn't it there's like an element of garbage to it and that's going to appear at a point in time I think before the CPU is kind of initializing things so that could be a clue that is the RAM So just to touch that uh, solder mask there and removed a bit of solder off there. So I've got all the solder off a of thing. It feels like most of the pins are free there now. It just doesn't feel loose. It looks fairly free down there. Let's just see if we can get a little bit of leverage under there. I just hope we've not uh, damaged any pads or traces there. Yeah, there we go. So, is that just a bit of solder perhaps, or is that the pad? I think that pad's lifted there, looks just a little bit. Right, let's clean up that, get a socket on. So it's always worth testing at different points, and I think we're onto something actually, because we now get a uh, bit further. See that? The white line is disappearing there. Hang on. It is normal. So it's getting further. So it's a RAM issue. I'm sure of it. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> With the keyboard connected, it's actually working. Yeah, you can see some differences. Well, I don't know actually, because now it seems working. Was it just that one RAM? That is unbelievable uh, the first time on the first chip there. When the keyboard's working, the system's working. Is that it? I don't know, it seems to be, doesn't it? Oh, well, at least I had some good luck with this after my bad luck of replacing the chip. There was nothing wrong with it earlier. 
The other interesting aspect to that is if the keyboard's disconnected, you do just get stuck at this black screen here. If you time it right, you can sometimes see the, the white bars as it initializes, you know, you got, there you go, lines in the middle there. I think on a CRT, you know, an old uh, monitor of some sort, you may see the yellow and red uh, flashes, you know, the blocks or whatever they are. But anyway, let's just connect the keyboard back up again, and I am sure that that will then show the, uh, you know, basic screen. Here we go, hang on. There we go. So there's something on that keyboard there that it's communicating with. I don't know what. Because as you can see, it just looks like keys, doesn't it? I don't see any ICs on there. Maybe there's something under here. I don't know. Does this peel off? Yeah, I have got no idea. There's, there must be something on here. Maybe it's got some pull-downs or something like that. And without those, you don't get basic up. So honestly, I am as surprised as you may be. I procrastinated over this for an hour or two, looking at the schematics, you know, scope and everything, going, well, I don't really know what to do with this. Other than, I could have connected to Logic Analyzer. You'll know that, because I've written a 6502 emulator in the past, you know, the NES emulator, and I do have a, a couple of Logic Analyzers. You saw me use the one in the uh, Famicom video there, you know, the... Guide to Digital, Noob's Guide to G Digital, and uh, I used it recently actually on the Sega Megatech board on the Patreon exclusive there for, uh, well looking at the address decoder actually on one of the chips, testing it out, but also reversing the JEDEC, that was the main focus of that video. Um, so yeah, I could have connected a logic analyzer and that may have helped reveal something because I'm familiar with the 6502, but uh, you know, not with the memory map here. Um, so it may not have provided any clues. I may have seen some inconsistencies in RAM. You know, it writes something to RAM, then it reads back, and then there's a difference there. I would have spotted that, perhaps. But that would have been an awful lot of messing around just for the sake of, well, look how long it's taken to do this. It's been two minutes, hasn't it, to swap that and uh, hit it first time. So, yeah, it was a calculated uh, guess, this, really. You know, the behaviour we had, there were no clues. We had no problematic signals. It was either going to be the RAM the CPU or the ROM and uh, I think actually it's safe to say because we saw the sync pin pulse in there and the read write uh, the sync would stall occasionally but because everything else on there seemed to be all right uh, there's a you know it was more probable here but what you see but you see the sort of failures you can get in a CPU believe it or not you can sometimes get problems in a specific register yeah um, or one specific instruction even. I have seen a CPU fail where one instruction has an issue. So that's the sort of thing where, it, yeah, you could you could drive yourself nuts trying to look at it, and the only way you're gonna realize is when you start swapping things around and ultimately get to the position where you've swapped the CPU. But uh, yeah, I'm very, very pleased. So I'll get the uh, toothbrush onto this in a sec. I think while we're here, can I just show you, look at that. There's the odd solder point where you're like, well, there isn't very much solder there, is there? There's not very many of them. There's just one or two. There's one here, perhaps. That's not too bad compared to the one on there. So I'm going to reflow those, but also, you see this modulator here? Can you see? It wobbles. So I'm going to heat these and just push it super flat because it feels like it is not as low down as it could be. I'm not sure what's happened there. So yeah, this is going to take an incredible amount of heat look, it's not melting. Let me uh, see if I can get the, well, I don't know, I was going to say get the iron onto it as well. But then I can't put any pressure, can I? I'm going to have to press down on it. Let's just get it on a flat surface. And let me heat with uh, both irons at the same time. Still not melting, what on earth is going on here? There we go, I'm, pr I'm pressing right down here. Just pull that away, hold it down. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's just do this one as well here. And again, we're gonna have to put it on the flat surface, heat both at once. And press down, hold. I don't like the shape of the solder there, but you know what, I'm not going to touch that. Just because, obviously, I need to try and get it flat. Let's see if that's made a difference. Yes, it has, actually. It's pretty robust, that now. And as I say, let's just get a tiny little bit of solder onto that point there.
Yeah, I'm not seeing any more points on that that look suspicious. So this is another one of those where if you're swapping out uh, one RAM chip, maybe you should swap the other ones while you're at it. But uh, yeah, I think this will be good for years probably. We'll get any dirt off here while we're at it as well. Look, put that down on the top side. Most of the time I will just tend to replace one single RAM chip, unless it's a certain brand, like MT RAM for example, generally. Uh, well, not always, because you'll see on one of my C64 repairs, I think I just replaced the odd one that was faulty. Um, but like on the Atari 800 I did for William, I swapped them all out, it's, uh, it's a good idea. It's just the brand, you know, MT RAM isn't that great, to say the least. There you go, that's not bad, not bad at all. So uh, yeah, we may as well clean this up while we're here. Using my The Future Was 8-bit eraser here. Look at that, it came straight off. Gold plates had done this, no expense spared by Acon back then. And then just wipe over with uh, some IPA. I tend to do that in the middle, otherwise you sometimes get bits of rubber stuck in the uh, gap there. Just flip this over and do the other side. I've got a cartridge I can test with this in a minute. When I say cartridge, it's not really cartridge, it's an expansion, isn't it? Because this isn't a cartridge uh, edge connector. You need the plus, I think, to use cartridges, proper cartridges. Yeah, there we go, that's not too bad. There's just a little mark there, let's just give that another go. That's a bit better. Now let's get the board back in. I've had the wrist strap on the, the whole while working on this. I don't want to take any chances. Certainly with that irreplaceable gate array there. You know, you could replace that with a Rockwell. You can get, you know, clone CPUs for that. You can replace that easily. 7.4 series is easy to replace and the RAM is easy to replace. But that uh, is, you know, irreplaceable. Get that back on. Modulator. And power. Woohoo, black screen. So, we just need to connect the keyboard up and it should be okay. Something else I'll point out here, this tantalum can easily get pushed down and short onto that resistor. I've just lifted that up, it was very, very, very close there. Obviously, you may want to recap something like this while you're at it. There are very few capacitors on it. I'll probably deal with the uh, power supply side uh, mainly, to be honest. But those tantalums can short, might be an idea to swap those while you're in here. And in terms of electrolytics on the motherboard, we've got uh, these two down here. That's bent because that's where I had the uh, scope ground connected actually. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, not very many, but they're all of the axial type look. Anyway, we may recap this in another video, but uh, right now I just want to get this back together. So let's get the four screws back in place that hold the board in. That may need straightening up because you know what, that looks weirdly bent over, doesn't it? I'm not quite sure how it's got bent like that. I'm sure it shouldn't be bent. So we'll we'll straighten it right out actually. There we go. And I guess we can connect the speaker back. I'm not sure where this silicon or whatever it is here would have been. I'm not it must have been down there actually because it's got a ridge, can you see that? So that must have been like that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and then it's plus to the right, so it's going to go that way around. Yeah, there we go. Maybe you could heat that, but I don't think so. It feels like silicon. feels like silicon. Anyway, that is nice and firm in there, so there's no reason to worry about that. I'm not sure if I showed you my disconnecting or connecting this up. So, you know, it's just literally a strip of pins there. And you just need to just carefully line it with the pins. And then it just pushes down. Oh! Shit. I'm not having much luck with this, am I? That isn't anything other than just a piece of plastic. I can glue that back on in a minute. So, oh yeah, trust me, align it and then push it down. I'd say I'm jinxed with this. Totally jinxed with this. I can fix that. It'll look alright. Right, so for now, put the top back on there. And connect to power. I'm cursed with this while I tell you. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. We even get a little beep. 
Now if you press break, you lose the acorn icon look. <laughs> this is strange how that happens, but that's normal behavior as far as I can see. So, the next thing to do is connect a cart up and uh, maybe test some games. Now I've not got any uh, games, well I've not even got an SD card, I'm going to use this. So if I just connect the power and we carefully flip this up here. So we've got a smaller connector on the left, larger one on the right, so it's going to go that way. Like that. Sweet! So, we've got MMFS, that's the final system I think. Sideways RAM, EPP, and at the top there you can now see we've got 64K, not 32K, RH plus one. So I need to get some stuff onto an SD card, don't I? So I've got an SD card there, it seems to be that way up. And if I plug in the power, that seems okay, and then it's hold down shift and press break. Yeah, there we go. It's loading from the SD card there. So this works just the same way as the device that you may or may not have seen on the BBC videos I've done, BBC Micro. It's the same kind of device, you have uh, one file on the card called beeb.mmb, so it's like a, a database if you like, or a, 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 an archive, that contains all of the disk images, so you can use software to actually manipulate that file, you know, modify it, and stick your own games and things, your own disk images in there, I think, you know, there's enough space there for some of your own. But the file I used, it's got a large collection of games, was downloaded from the link that comes with the documentation for this. So I'll post some links down below, but this is called an Elk SD64. Uh, so how do you go page down? Oh, you choose the letter, so I could press B, presumably. I oh, know I can't. B's up there, 3D Dotsy. I've just loaded that. That's like Pac-Man, is it, or something? Maybe not. It looks terrible on this TV, it really does. It's not just the chroma and luma, you know, all the chroma wobbling around there. It's the fact it's RF. I really do need to do a composite mod to this. It's pretty simple, similarly uh, to a Spectrum. Uh, you can just find the, the composite signal there and uh, wire it through to where the RF goes. I'm not sure if we've got some, uh, still got a RAM problem here, because you can see we've got some graphics that don't quite look right so maybe there is another RAM chip bad on this. Return to play. Yeah I think there's another RAM chip bad on this. Maybe not, I don't know. I've seen this before actually. I forgot what the keys are already, I remember what up down was. I don't know what up and down is. I remember what left and right is, I don't know what up and down is. Can you jump? It's not a bad game this actually. <laughs> it's kind of like Crystal Castles isn't it? As soon as you have a certain amount of health, I was just watching the health bar go down when that blue water or whatever it is went over me. So that blue plastic, I've just put some glue on it and uh, put a uh, clamp on it just to hold it in place. It should uh, should be okay. I'll show you that later. Um, this sticker needs sticking back down. It just fell off. It's just one of the uh, It's just one of the quality control stickers. But I will just get a little bit of uh, you who was something under that and just stick that down. But we also need to remove this foot. So let's just uh, grip it with the pliers here while I unscrew from the underside. I'm not sure if the head's a bit torn up there, is it? Feels like it might be. No, it's coming out. So we can glue that back onto the lid. And of course we've got the opposite problem here. <laughs> the screw is stuck on the lid and there's a flap that's broken off there, so we need to glue that onto that part. It is just like Yoohoo. Uh, Yoohoo obviously is perhaps a brand here in the UK. God, I don't need that much, just a little bit. And I'll stick it where it was actually, it was, it was sort of there, like that. 
So I was thinking of doing a composite mod to this, and you know what? I scoped that there and I thought, hang on a minute, that's composite. So I've just plugged it in, and lo and behold it is. I think, though, it's monochrome. So let's try it with the Elk SD. You can see that looks uh, a lot better, actually. But if we do shift brake, you'll see we are lacking colour here. Yeah, I can tell straight away. I'm sure that title at the top there, the options, yeah, there's no colour look. Um, now, if it's anything like the BBC, there's probably going to be a jumper somewhere, hopefully, to merge the chroma. If there isn't, we can just merge it ourselves, so there's going to be no problem doing this, I think. So, hmm, let's have a look at the board. So, I'll just uh, pull the keyboard over. Let's just get the power. Right, let's try and pull the connector off. This time, I'm hooking under, underneath of it here, like that, pulling up carefully. Uh, yeah, so that's that one out of the way. Yeah, and I just want to inspect around here because there must be there must be a jumper somewhere, perhaps. There are several of them. You can see, like we've got one here. There's one there, one here. Now the eighty sixes are where the uh, uh, video signal comes out of. So it, I'm inclined to think it's going to be somewhere around here. It could be that. It could be LK two. I don't think it's LK three. I'm just going to go and look at the schematics to see where LK2 sits on the schematics, actually. So I think it's LK4 here, because you've got the uh, colour burst signal comes out here and is merged with uh, the stuff here, red, green, blue. But then in terms of the video out connector here, that seems to just get blue, green and red. Yeah, so that's going to, be, that's going to act as like Luma, you're not going to have a chroma. The circuit here, I think, is merging the colour burst and adding the chroma. So I think, I mean, I could be wrong, I think LK4. I don't see any of the jumpers or anything around here. There's one there for NTSC, I think, NTSC PAL. The one over here, the one we're looking at on the board, LK2, is NTSC PAL. I don't see any of the configuration options. I could be missing one. So I'm just going to just try bridging LK4. Yeah, that took some serious hunting for. It's down here next to this transistor. Yeah, LK4, two connections. So you could, in theory, just blob a solder, blob across those. I'm going to test them, though, with a little uh, crocodile clip things. I'm just going to bend this transistor out of the way slightly so that I can access them. What's that there? Oh, it's one of the legs on that transistor. Yeah, I'm just going to try and uh, bridge across there and see what difference that makes. Yeah, and bridging across there, you can see we've got colour now. Excellent, that was really easy to do. Yeah, so it's going to look better with RGB, that, that is for certain. It's looking like the Spectrum title screen, that, isn't it? That's been lifted and shifted from the Specky. So, yeah, the colours could be a bit better. It's not very bright or vibrant. So, let's hit space. So it's a little slow at rendering the screen here compared to other versions. Just as it draws all these, you know, the background stuff there. So I think the first bit on here is that you've got to navigate the boats through the minefield, isn't it? God, that's taking ages to draw that. Yeah, so it certainly had some limitations to the electron, but uh, you know what? It's not that bad actually. It is basically like a baby BBC. Yeah, sweet, that's working. I'm so bad at this on every version of this. I can never hit the planes. So that's it for part one. I had to bring the video to a close because there's quite a lot more which will have to go into part two. So a special thanks to Retro Marky for sending this one with the RAM faults. As you can see, we've got it working within this video, but there's still more to do to it and more to do to the other ones. So I'll see you in part two for those. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.